Hey guys, Matty Extreme Auto, carrying and camping. Been super slack with the videos just because we're flat out. I got a big run up to uh, pretty much Easter for my big trip. Nonetheless, I'm in a bush tracker. This is like an 04 bush tracker. Check this out. That is 1200 amp hours. It's actually over that. I tested at 310. So there are four Powerpool Scouts there. So that's 1240 amp hours. Nuts, it's six, over 16 kilowatt hours of lithium storage for this 04 Bush Tracker upgrade. Now I'll put up some photos of what it looked like here before we've done this whole Victron suite. As you can see, there's a lot going on down here. This was an absolute mess. We've just tied it up the best we can and basically redone all the existing 12 volt circuits these two that we're going through here are going to, into this area where the inverter is. So this is like previously the, the original inverter was in this position, so it's vented there. It's vented around the back here. This, this whole cupboard's pretty much open. But you can see how high it is. It is pretty much flush with the bottom of the seat. So, you know, you've got to have good ventilation around it. So cross ventilation through there. Old mate's got some stuff in there now, which I'll tell him to pull out just to try and keep that airflow through here. And should he need to, this door can obviously be open, but I did encourage replacing this with some sort of large event as well because this is such a tight location. But this was this is all we could do with the job. We are stoked with this. There is a lot of solar, as you can see. So this, there's three solar controls. There's the 50, the 30, and the 50. There's the Servo GX with a Touch 70. We have two Red Arc DC chargers in this thing. So there's 80 amps of charge coming from the vehicle. And we've done the touch 70. You can see our mate's gonna do some painting because the original solar controller was around there. That's been removed. This whole track has been painted. So that'll get painted. There's the PV breakers. We've got, with the 1200, you know, with the 1200 lithium, you know, we've been running this air conditioner now for a little bit over an hour. And I've, I've, we've got no solar light. We are in full shade. I've only used 5%. Pretty cool. Good that you can do that when you get a lot of energy. Now, in line with the new standards, this is a sealed area, all right? So this is completely sealed off. We've already done it before we put the batteries in, so it's completely sealed off. It's hard to see it. You might be able to see light there. It is, you can see it. So there's that vent, all right? So that's an external vent through there, guys. So this lid will get seal put around this shortly, and then that will get jammed down and will block off this as well. So this will become not part of the habitable area, and back over here, there's all the LMI fuses all labelled. Simple and easy to use. Got your inverter fuse, solar left, solar right, solar front. Dust system, this has a respite dust system on it, as well as a blackjack on the drawbar. Master 12 volt, and then that large one there, which is a 125 amp circuit. That's to cover the DC charges. So a pretty gnarly system, but let's just say there's, there's a lot going on. In the form of solar, there are, so we've got, they're, they're all Volta panels that were previously put on. So there are three 200s along this side. There's another two on this side, so there's a thousand. And then there's four 120s up the front and another one at the rear. So what's that? That's some big numbers. <laughs> Pretty cool. Like, so that, that's how we split the solar systems up. So all of the 100s are on the one of the 50 amp controllers. The three 200s are on the other 50 and the other two 200s are on the other, um, on the 30 amp. So this is gonna put out some good numbers. Now I'm in a caravan park where there's a bunch of trees, I'll show you. That's what I'm dealing with. So it's, it's a bit difficult to get good solar yields on a day like today. Hopefully if that sun can kind of come across, maybe about 1.30, 2 o'clock, we might see some good numbers, just like I did yesterday. And I was seeing, you know, close to a thousand, which is pretty good for dappled light and you know especially if that back section shaded maybe to get that sort of power it's really good but this is we're running the air conditioner right now so i was four air conditioner on this and these guys pretty much want to be gasless that, that was their aim so they're not like crazy energy uses as, you, as in run multiple things all the time at the same time but they're able to run their induction cooker they've got a little induction cooker here they'll get going yeah they've got their washer they'll be able to run all this off grid and this is a tracker bush tracker you guys that know your bush trackers, they've got a massive amount of water tanks on these things. Like there's, so there's five water tanks and a grey. So I think one's drinking water, four, four water, and then one grey. Plus a diesel heat as well. And we've actually done all of the Ruby ta um, Ruby tanks, the Mopekas. So diesel, grey water, 
LPG, two LPG tanks. All of his water tanks will be on the Mopeka sensor setup. I'll show you now what we've done. So we're yet to program in the water tanks, but I'll just show you what we've done so far. So there's the tanks we've done. So we've done LPG left and right, diesel, because there's a diesel heater on this, and the gray tanks at zero. I mean, how good does that look? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just a simple screen to look at your tanks. And these sensors are so accurate. Like, you know, you, as long as you program them within spec, it's ultrasonic. So basically it will sense depth here at this point and then to a higher point. So if your tank is, you know, 20 centimetres thick, you program 20 centimetres. When your tank fills up, you just zero it off. And it's so easy to do. You go into menu and you go into your tank. As an example, let's go into the diesel tank. Now, for you guys that have diesel tanks, this is a black diesel tank. So they're quite, quite large or quite long and skinny. Now, when I've put a sensor on it, go to set up, you'll see, look what it's reading, 30 centimetres. So it's full, it's full as a goog. So we zero that off, quite, see it's 0.7, that's how accurate it is. We just do 30, it's close enough. So sensor value when full, 30 centimetres. We're full, so it's reading that. Sensor value when empty, obviously as he empties his tank, he can zero that off to match when it's empty, if he wishes. 2.5 centimetres is pretty right. It's a 12 litre tank, and the result is here. Plus it shows you temperature, how good that. Grey tanks, nothing's in it at the moment. It's all right here in front of you guys. So both gas bottles are full as a gook. He's actually just filled them up himself right here at the caravan park. And those there are reading, you know, 16 litres is what we try and say for our, a nine kilo gas bottle. If we're going to set up, they'll be reading probably something like 25 or 26. There we go. So 26 centimetres. Um, I've got with nine, because I've been doing it for so long, the nine kilo bottles. I like to use this rule, two and four, two and 24. This is pretty generic uh, for the gas bottles and when I put the sensors on it, it usually works pretty good. And the proof's right there. I mean, you know, it's only measuring say two centimetres over. That's, you know, yeah. So from 100%, I, look, if you wanted to, you could put the sensor value, this one went full, you could put that at say 26 and it would be very accurate. But, you know, people fill up gas bottles differently and yeah, I like this. This is pretty generic and it works for me. Uh, shows you sensor battery as well. Inverter charger, we're on. So we are not plugged into the grid right now. We are completely off grid because we are running the whole air conditioner from batteries. So the Ibis 4 running cold air 19, it's ramped down, hits the load. It's only 500 watts. But you know, even at, at the given moment, like look, we're only pulling 30 something amps. So if I go into manual, we go to the battery time remaining i mean come on it's going to run for 20 for 36 hours at the current i mean that's nuts isn't that crazy that's with, with with 70 watts of solar coming in how good's that time to go one day and 12 hours 36 hours that's pretty cool hey guys so yeah just a quick one on this one guys i'm absolutely belted for time so 1200 amp hours of lithium victron multi plus 12 3000 120 amp inverter charger, all factory integrated, microwave, air conditioner, you know, induction cooker, washing machine, hair dryer, the full show. Three solar controllers here, because there are three massive arrays. We've got five 120 watt panels on the on the this roof, three 200s and two more 200s. Big numbers, like well over 1500 watts. And we've got DC chargers, two of them. So there's 80 amps of DC charger coming from this. It's an F250 with a massive alternator. We're able to do that. And it's got a massive 175 amp Anderson on this to, ta to take that load. Four of the Power Pool Scouts, 310 amp hours each. Got the Servo GX down there as well, as well as the Touch 70 on this, so the larger screen, which I'll basically have to paint and make nice and neat. Completely factory integrated. Their 12 volt system on this, this is a big upgrade. These guys are going to be self sufficient beyond, beyond anything. They're not even going to run out of water. To have this, bush trackers have so much water. So these guys are set. Like, I'm really. Really stoked with how this one's come up. They're running Starlink as well, so I've got the system running on Starlink, so it's on the VRM portal. So if I want to monitor something, or if he's got a concern with something, or if he wants to do a software update and he's not um, happy doing it, I can do it remotely. I can also log in and check things like solar yields, what the solar controller is doing, temperatures and what for, like that. So pretty cool, very happy guys. It's massive, it's bloody huge. So yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep videos coming.